and a warm welcome to everyone here. If you're just tuning in, uh, hit subscribe, like, and uh, you know, you know the rest. But let's start off with a game. We're going to play a game against Brazil. Andre Scuddy. And we're going to play a normal game. I've been in very good rhythm lately, apparently. I think it's because I've been watching the candidates' games again with Gukesh and Hikaru Nakamura and Ian Naponachi and all of these guys. And watching chess helps you to become a better player. Why? Why does it help? That's the topic of today's lesson. When you watch a game, you, uh, if you understand the reasoning behind certain moves, then you get a peek into the player's understanding of the game of chess. And the yeah, chess is a game that is about understanding more so than about calculation. There's a common misconception that in order to become good at tactics, you've got to be great at calculating. And yeah, it's true for obvious things like mate and three and all of that. But most game scenarios are really just about testing your understanding of the game. Take this position, for example. I have a lovely bishop. I understand that this bishop is the piece for me in this game. I'm not going to let it be easy to, you know, take this away. Same might go through for him, but maybe not as much. So what I noticed in Gukesh's games is that he had an impeccable understanding of the game of chess. And he made some moves which were somewhat counterintuitive. Like one might even wonder, hey, isn't that a bit too slow? But because of the clear understanding, he was able to make it work. Calculation and evaluation go hand in hand. Now, what does that mean? It's fair enough to calculate uh, a a series of moves like okay queen captures queen then knight captures this and this and plus nine minus six plus three okay okay calculation but actually that whole calculation is kind of irrelevant what really matters is the evaluation of the position after all the tactics all of those calculations have unfolded in other words, in order to fully understand whether your uh, tactics, whether your calculation makes sense or not, you have to be able to un assess whether a position is winning for you or losing for you. Is it plus 0 0.3 or plus 0 0.7? You have to understand the game in order to be able to judge that and make calculations accordingly. Here, what I can say is we're under a little, tiny little bit of pressure because this night I have misplayed it and the spawns are not rolling and uh, it's all just going to shit, really, right? It's all just a shiza. Uh, <clears throat> but I do have this lovely diagonal. Yay! <laughs> I don't know. I'm annoyed. I'm annoyed with myself a little bit here. I'm just going to step back with the queen. I want this bishop to own that, that square. He is the rightful owner of the square. And I want this queen to support the pawn breaks because if you don't know what your pawn break plan is, then you don't have a plan. You're just moving the pieces. You're just being a wood pusher. Are you a wood pusher or are you a man with a plan? The answer to that depends on whether you know whether you're planning to play b4 or e4. Now, e4 doesn't work here for me. He's got all the pieces. He's got everything well covered for it. So it's not really working out. I've got to go b4. Minority pawn storm. This is a common pattern. Whenever you have fewer pawns and the opponent has many pawns on the other side, it's very common to go for this minority pawn storm attack. Just ruffle up the feathers over there. You know, try to come here and then uh, 
capture the spawn, he captures back, and then your rook captures here. You can exert pressure using the open file. Now he's going all in on the mate here, so we've got to be careful. But we also got to be ambitious. Also got to be principled. I understand that even though I'm under fire, I'm safe. I'm safe as long as this knight can guard the square and this bishop can guard the square. As long as those two conditions are met, I am safe. But if he keeps coming in with more and more artillery, well, then I don't know. I really don't know. I might, I can always duck out with queen here. Ducking out with queen here, look, looking to relieve the tension by trading the queens. I should also throw in a bishop swagger in there, you know, just to ruffle him up a little bit. He's so well coordinated, I don't like it. But yeah, ultimately he's only 2,000 level. So he's not going to be able to finish this off. He's just moving the pieces into pretty spaces. We take that. And now is he going to plan something like this? He'll have to shuffle this back. Let's go continue with our minor, not minority pawn storm in the meantime. And when the time is right, we probably... Hmm. I think I got to toss it in there already. I got to maybe dissolve the knight already early on. Possibly. What is this? Nah, bro. He tried to get too cute. He thought if I take it with the rook, he'll have a mate here, but he doesn't because I'm taking it with the queen. So let's guard it. Tried to get too cute, too tactical, too wannabe-ish. Don't do wannabe tactics if you don't know what you're doing. All right? All right. Uh, uh, let's have a quick review. Yeah, nothing special. It's a shizer game. 